Well, good morning. It's so great to see all of you here, and we have a lot to celebrate today. Uh, today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, as we heard a Karen play the uh, tune of uh, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, and we think about Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and so we celebrate uh, the work of the Trinity, and we'll be doing that uh, within our message and all the songs uh, pointing to that as we continue our series, When the Spirit Moves, and today we're going to be looking at uh, what it means to be born of the Spirit. So Jesus has this conversation with Nicodemus, and, and he asks some questions. So we're going to have some questions and uh, work on uh, having God and the Holy Spirit be born in us to answer them. So that's what we're looking at. want to welcome everyone watching online as well. Blessings uh, to you on this weekend, and uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Pastor Matt, if we haven't met, and just uh, be active and interactive on service, uh, wishing one another a blessed Trinity Sunday, and also uh, we can all uh, wish each other a blessed Memorial Day weekend, because that's one thing we uh, remember today, we'll be doing that within our prayers, is uh, praying uh, over the families and over the lives of those uh, men and women who gave their lives for the freedoms that we celebrate. So uh, we commemorate that and remember that this weekend. So uh, just take some time to be in prayer and uh, give thanks for those who serve. Uh, or if you do know a veteran or someone who is serving, give, uh, give them a thank you and uh, and a, a warm uh, greeting uh, and thanks of what they have done for us. So just want to remind everyone to have a safe and blessed rest of your Memorial Day weekend. I know I want to say hi to all the Linda Keys who are at the cabin if you're watching. I uh, hope you guys are doing well there. And anyone else who's traveling uh, out and about, be safe. And to be in remembrance of that, the office will be closed tomorrow in observance of Memorial Day. So wanted to just remind everyone of that. So. Uh, so celebrate, uh, be safe, and uh, give thanks for that. So wanted to mention that. Also wanted to mention that uh, next week we continue our series, When the Spirit Moves, by looking at what it means to be renewed. Uh, so that'll be at 10 a.m. next week. So you can continue to join us either uh, online or in person uh, for that. And then also continuing on this week, we have our Zoom Bible study at 7 p.m. So we'll be looking uh, in a little more detail about the Trinity and uh, different aspects of, of him and some questions that we have uh, for that. So come join us 7 p.m. on Wednesday on Zoom. And if you haven't used it before and would like some help, you can email uh, the office at secretary at resurrection-lcms.org and get some help with that. So wanted to share that. Also wanted to mention that uh, we do have room here, I know that we're all sort of at different places, but just want to uh, mention to anyone who's uh, considering coming that we're still doing uh, distancing and other safety measures to make it a comfortable environment for, for everyone. So wanted to remind everyone uh, that we are here for you uh, when you're able to or ready to, and uh, uh, just blessings over you. And for those of you at home, uh, just know that we still love you and care for you, and if you do need uh, something like communion, uh, we do have uh, a delivery available, so wanted to share that reminder as well. If you, if you would like communion uh, in a time when you're not here or uh, aren't coming to service, that you can uh, call the church and we can work on getting that sent to you, so wanted to mention that. Also, uh, the voters meeting is coming up in uh, I guess that's now two weeks from now, on the 13th at 1145. Uh, so we're going to have service at 10, and then we'll have a little uh, break in between. Uh, maybe we'll set up uh, some coffee outside in the, uh, the lawn out front in between uh, that time so we can uh, have a little bit of fellowship. And then we will uh, come back in here at 1145 for those in person. Uh, and, and the main thing is to uh, affirm or confirm our leadership uh, on the council for the coming year, so we'll do that. Um, then we'll also have some smaller things uh, of, about the future, uh, and our brother in Christ, Dave Reese, will be leading a conversation on the Crusade Yes ministry that we're looking at starting uh, in the upcoming uh, year, so wanted to uh, share that, and there's really good information in that uh, discussion that he led in Bible study. So I wanted to share with you about needs of the school districts and where different people are at in our area. So that's a good reminder of how we can reach out. And just one note on that is uh, if you haven't signed up for one or planning on using uh, or attending online, uh, we really encourage you to sign up for a YouTube account. That way you can uh, type 
in during the meeting uh, your questions or be more interactive and say we're here. We found out from the fall meeting that uh, unless you, if you didn't have one, you couldn't type in, so we're trying to uh, be proactive on that. So if you need uh, help with that, I know we sent out an email with instructions, but if you need some more help, uh, we'll send that out again or you can let us know. And then finally, uh, for the ladies of RLC, a survey, uh, I believe, was sent out over the weekend. If it wasn't, we'll get it to you on Tuesday. But Joan uh, Thomas is looking at starting up the Tuesday morning women's Bible study again, uh, starting in early July as uh, things begin to open back up and we have more people vaccinated. And so the email was sent out to help gauge interest of where people are at. Uh, so if you could fill that out and let us know uh, where you're at with that, that would be a great help for her in uh, starting back up the study uh, in July, like I mentioned. So with that said, that's everything I have. So we can rise and stand as we have a, a call to worship and honoring and adoring our triune God. Holy are you, Father, source and creator of all things. We bring our praise for your gift of life. Holy are you, Son and Redeemer of all things. We bring you our thanks for your gift of new life. Holy are you, Spirit and Sustainer of all things. We come to bear witness to you, poured out in this world. And so, born anew, we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit ever three and ever one. Amen. Amen. And with this cry of our hearts going forth, we get to sing out, holy, holy, holy.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we meet you in wonder as the Blessed Trinity. You are the Ancient of Days, eternal and unchanging. Yet you are the source of each new day, renewing all things. In Christ, you encounter us in whatever each day brings with a heart that beats in love for us. Through the Spirit, you breathe life into what is growing older, energizing us to serve you in good times and hard times. In the mystery of the Trinity, you are always with us, and so we bring you our worship and praise to move and join you in your dance of life and love. Amen. There are times, though, when we do the dance of our own of the beat of our own drummer we dance in the rhythm of sin and so we have to lift that over to the lord that he might renew and restore us and so we confess to him holy and healing god you are slow to anger and swift to forgive you have shown us the depth of your love day by day yet we are reluctant to love others even a little you have shown us compassion and forgiveness, yet we turn away from one another for even small slights. Forgive us, create in us clean hearts and a desire to begin with you and with one another. Give us the courage to forgive each other and know your healing grace. So take a few moments of silence and just give over to the Lord those places where you need his healing grace in your lives. Rejoice. Rejoice, because if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything, everything has become new. Thanks be to God that we all can make a new start through the gift of his peace and forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you now may be seated as we have our scripture lessons for this morning. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and the, with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise for the gospel reading. Today's gospel from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who was who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you. We speak of what we know, and we testify. To what we have seen but still you people do not accept our testimony I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe how then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the son of man just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. And as we've heard those amazing gospel words, we get to confess who this amazing gospel triune God is. And this is the confession that we did last week as well for Pentecost. And this is the tie-in of how it carries over from Pentecost to uh, Trinity Sunday and that we believe in the same God and the power of the Holy Spirit working through both the Father and Son. So let us confess this together. We believe in God the Father who reveals his love to us in Christ. We believe in God the Son, who pours out God's Holy Spirit on us. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who teaches us God's truth. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And you now may be seated as we continue to worship and singing all hail, majestic Trinity.
Oh, how beautiful and powerful it is when we get to sing the unity of the Trinity and the unity we have is his body. And let's make that our prayer. O oh, triune God of unity, O oh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we praise you for you are the one from whom all blessings flow. We praise you that you have blessed us with the ability to gather and worship this morning. We praise you that we can lift our hands and worship. We praise you for this word that you have given us this morning. May you guide the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts that they be pleasing to you and you alone. And we praise you that you are a God who defends us and has overcome all evil. That is one born of the spirit, we can go out with victory and joy and new life. So Lord, may we just declare that new life in this place and defend us from any temptation or distraction that would come up against us in this place or in our homes. May we just give you, our triune God, all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. How can this be? How can this be? Did you know that these are the last recorded words of Nicodemus in all of Scripture? How can this be? He ends with a question. But it's from that question that Jesus expounds. Not only expounds, but it leads him to a dialogue that gives us one of the most impactful and most uh, cherished verses that is the most near and dear to our hearts. John 3.16, and it all came from this question. How can this be? Nicodemus had questions, and this morning we have questions as well. I'm sure many of us have been asking this question over the last year and in many other moments in life. How can this be? And as we continue our series, When the Spirit Moves, we're asking the question, what does it look like when the Spirit moves? What does it mean to be born of the Spirit? And as we celebrate Trinity Sunday, we also zoom out to not only what does it mean to take in the actions of the Holy Spirit, but what, is it, uh, what are the actions of the whole Godhead of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? What is the Trinity like? How can we grasp this marvelous mystery of God? And we'll wrestle with these questions a bit, but we'll also realize that it's okay to bring questions to God and to grapple with them over uh, amounts of time. We don't always get answers right away, even when we're asking, how can this be? It's not an immediate response. Even when we don't understand, though, we can rest assured that our God is present. Even when things are impossible to grasp, we have the unity, the fellowship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so to wrestle with the questions of the Trinity, it's worth looking at different aspects of the Godhead. And I'm going to go on a bit of a detour at this point, uh, but I'm going to come back around. I'm going to circle around the track and get back to it. If you, you see, last week after Pentecost service to unwind, uh, I took some time to watch some different uh, car races. And one of the car races that I watched was actually, uh, I DVR'd it because the time difference was so big, but it was the Formula One race from Monaco. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, the Formula One race at Monaco, but it's one of the ritziest and most glamorous races you can participate in because Monaco is like one of the richest places in the world. So people uh, pull up, it's right on the harbor, so they pull up in yachts, big yachts to enjoy the race. I mean, it's just crazy. And so uh, not only is the race big, but the victory is done up in a big way as well. You see the top three drivers, uh, those who finish in uh, first, second, and third after all the moving and shaking goes on, they get to stand on the podium in celebration. And as part of the celebration, as you see on the screen, they're given big bottles of champagne. And they usually don't drink most of the bottle of champagne. Rather, they shake it up and they spray it all over one another like madmen. It's, it's a crazy celebration, sort of like uh, when one of our teams wins a championship here stateside. And, and it, it's more like, a, I almost categorize it as a wild baptismal scene that they're uh, going and, and getting everyone sprayed down. And, and so the question then is this, why do I share about the champagne celebration? Well, let's think about how the Trinity moves. Creation itself sprang forth from the triune God bubbling forth 
in love. Like a bottle of shaken up champagne, so is God's love within the Trinity. It's effervescent, it's so richly pressured and full that sooner or later the cork just had to explode out. And when it did, a river of sparkling love, of grace, and, uh, and creation, it gushed forth. And it just went everywhere. Creation is the overflow of God's love for his creation. God wanted to share life and love so badly that he already had among the Godhead as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that he couldn't just do anything but let it out. And eventually we'll see how this love, it bubbled over into the life of, uh, through the Spirit and into the life of Nicodemus. But we're not quite there yet. First, we have to put ourselves in Nicodemus' shoes. And Jesus said to him, you need to be born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus did not understand. But what he did have and what he felt comfortable with was asking Jesus questions. And that's a good reminder for us. Going back to that original question, how can this be? So you can be comfortable asking Jesus asking the triune God those questions, those hard questions. How can this be? Why did you let my loved one get ill? Why am I separated from a a loved one? Why is there this void? All those type of questions you can ask the, the Trinity. All the questions, the obvious ones, the smart ones, the irritating ones, the time wasting ones, the earnest ones, the honest ones, the angry ones, and the hurting ones. They're all good. They're okay to ask, and we need to learn to ask the Lord these questions. But as we ask, we, we lean and trust in those moments. We need to learn to lean, if you will. Learn to lean and trust. Trust and seek Seek that he is good. Believe as we wonder, how can these things be? Believe and ask, learn and live. To be born of the Spirit is to ask questions and then seek God truth in truth in his living word. And so not only do we have to be comfortable with asking God questions, but then we have to be comfortable with others asking us questions. What does this mean? Why does God allow X, Y, or Z to happen? How can he love someone like me? Is he even real? We might have answers for some, for others we may not. But what we can do in those moments is continue the dialogue. I don't know, but let's continue to have a conversation and build relationships as the Spirit is poured out and moves among us, as we talked about last week with Pentecost. Now, like I said, we do have answers for some of these questions. For the question of how can God love someone like me? Well, we have John 3.16 as an answer. For God so loved the world. He just does love. That's his natural state of being. He loves the world, so he sent his son. He didn't have to put a qualifier on it that he only loves this part of the world or these people in the world. No, it's God loved the world, and he wants his love to be poured out over the whole world like a beautiful, bubbly, rich champagne. He wants it to flow and bubble. He wants that effervescent champagne of the gospel to bubble into every corner of the earth, every nook and cranny of this world, that people may believe in him, no exceptions. And so with this reminder, we flow back into the narrative of Nicodemus. And it seems after asking these questions, Jesus didn't write them off and say, no more talking to you. I mean, he must have continued to build a relationship with him, continued to share words with him that would bring eternal life, that would lead him to be born of the Spirit. Because after this happened, there's another question. When is the next time we see Nicodemus in Scripture? So he asked this question, and then we see him again later, but where is it? 
It's at the cross, at the crucifixion, at Jesus' burial. And we read this in John 19, towards the very end, in verses 38 through 40. Later, Joseph, Joseph at Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. And here's where we get to it. He was accompanied by Nicodemus. And how do we know it was the same Nicodemus? Because it, John goes on and says, the man who had earlier visited Jesus at night. And so he references this very conversation from John 3. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. And taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. So that shows he had a love for Jesus. He cared for him even in his death, wrapped him up, soothed his body. And we don't know how it worked exactly, how the spirit was born in him, but obviously these actions, like I said, show the love for his rabbi. It shows what a life born in the spirit looks like. And while we don't know what happened to him in those following three days and then after the resurrection, I would say it's safe to imagine, to conjure, that he became a bold witness of Jesus. And how so? How would, how would have that happened if that's the case? Well, it wouldn't have been because he just figured it out all on his own that the gears of his mind turned and after that discussion in John 3, it all fell into place. No, rather being born of the Spirit, which Jesus spoke of, requires far more effort on God's part. It requires the Holy Spirit to light a fire inside of him. It requires him to make a person alive in those bubbling waters of baptism that bubble over like a champagne celebration that I mentioned earlier. It's through the work of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It then requires a person, this is where it then comes to our part. It requires us to then see the world in upside down ways that Jesus always talked about when it came to his kingdom. What are these type of upside down ways I'm talking about? Well, a person had to be reborn in the spirit that the idea of humility and kindness are far more, more valuable than pride and brazen efforts to promote oneself. It's a good reminder in today's social media world. Or the upside down way that the meek, lowly, and quiet of the earth are far, far more valuable than the bold, the lofty, and the noisy of the earth. Above all, one has to come to the greatest insight of, of things flipping, that it's not through human insight or human logic that we can manufacture this. That when God came to save the world, he did so, not by anything we did, but by depositing a humble little baby boy into a manger out in the edge of nowhere land and farmland. And if this idea was not startlingly radical enough, there's another thing that Jesus mentions in this passage, directly mentions, that salvation will come by looking at an emblem of the very thing that terrifies most people the most. And what is that? An emblem of death. Just as the Israelites had to look at a bronze image of what was ailing them with the snake bite to get healed, so too all of us have to look at a bloody instrument of crucifixion, of execution to find eternal life. That is the world turned upside down. Then in the power of the resurrection, if Nicodemus truly did believe like we conjured, he would have found that the ultimate joy in his life was not because he was Israel's teacher, not because of his position, but because of the joy he found in his Savior, Jesus. The joy he finds in Christ. It was because he had been born again through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if that happened, then Nicodemus could rest assured of something else that he'd spend the rest of eternity 
dwelling and thanking the Lord for the words on that night that were spoken on John 3, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believed in him should have eternal life. He'd be able to marvel over all of those words forever, words spoken directly to him by his rabbi. And we can reflect on these same words and never grow tired of marveling over them as well. We can marvel over them and we can dance and we can move in the love and the joy of the Holy Spirit who is poured out upon us. How can we grasp this marvelous mystery as we asked earlier in the sermon? Well, our dance, our rhythm in life should look like the dance and rhythm of the Trinity. You see, in our Western tradition, we always think of the Trinity as what? A triangle. A triangle. But in the Eastern Orthodox Church, they actually think of the Trinity as more of a circle. And the early Greek church had a term for this. It was perichoresis. Perichoresis. I don't know if you want to try to say that or not. Perichoresis. And I know you'll get to use this in everyday uh, conversations now. And it's a Greek word, perichoresis, which means rotation. And it was used to illustrate the uh, interpenetrating dance of love shared by the three persons of the Godhead. They would just dance in circles around one another. So there's this image on the screen. If you look at the, um, one of the later pages in the bulletin after the service, you'll see another image of it. And that's a reminder that the Trinity is like an ever-moving circle of dance in which the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are constantly and forever moving in and through one another in perfect bliss, harmony, and self-forgetful joy. The three persons of God are so invested in one another, so interested in one another, so caring that though they are three persons, they form one God. They've been serving each other for all of eternity and finding joy in that loving co-service. And so it's at no surprise then, like we mentioned earlier, that at some point these three persons decided that this love was so great and so focused was this love on one another that they wanted an entire universe to feel what they were feeling, to share this love with others. And so... Just as God wanted to create, he wanted to have his creation share the love. Share the love. And and God's motivation is similar to our, uh, our our motivation is similar to God's motivation, rather. Think about it sort of like, uh, for those of you who have had uh, children that got married, you wanted all your friends and family to be there to celebrate uh, this momentum occasion in your child's life. Or maybe it was an anniversary celebration in your own life. So you wanted to share the love with as many people as possible. You wanted to share that effervescent, bubbling love, just like champagne. And that's what we're called to do. Share the love, one person to another, that bubbles through in our lives. This Trinity Sunday, born of the Holy Spirit, dancing with the Trinity in celebration, let's prepare ourselves to tell the church's story by reminding ourselves this morning that there's a God who guides us, who calls us, who claims us, and who loves us. Let us be reminded that we are made new to move in the Spirit, continually renewed in the Spirit as we seek to make disciples of ourselves in this world. Let's go. Let's go as we ask questions, Let's go as we hear questions to dwell on them and ask that we would be able to have moments to share the effervescent love of the triune God. Let people know in all moments they can ask questions and that in those questions there is an answer of gospel hope and joy. So let's go out to move in the spirit. Let's dance and let's shake up the world like a good bottle of champagne. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. And I had wanted to uh, have bottles of champagne ready so after we left service we could all go out and spray one another, but that'll have to wait for another time. So until then, though, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. O most holy trinity, undivided unity, 
Teach us the gentle deference of your dance, of surrendered love, how with infinite tenderness and utmost esteem you so gently, adornly are present to one another. Teach us your perichoresis, your grand circle dance, where you eternally birth joy from the womb of reverence. Teach us your unending, enfolding regard for the pure holiness you hold and behold. You, sweet breath in the lungs of creation, eternally giving, empty, and eternally receiving are filled. You release and bind, but never push nor pull. You hold accountable, but never blame. You incline yourselves to one another as a grove of green willows bending in the breeze, bowing to each other's grace, known and cherished on the broad plain of mutuality. Deepen our trust, O blessed Trinity, that we may enter such intimacy with you to go forth and dance and share your bubbling joy in this world. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And at this time, we'll have some uh, instrumental music to uh, reflect on the, the dance of the Trinity that we're to partake in this week. Um, the instrumental music played, um, make sure to listen closely because it's actually the melody of the um, first worship song we're going to sing, first praise song. It's a new song called This I Believe. It's a confession of the triune God. Uh, it's a newer song out, so uh, you'll get to learn the melody. I also sent it out earlier on Facebook this week, so you might have heard it there. Uh, so listen to that and get familiar so we can then sing it out. And I just want to thank everyone for your uh, continued support of resurrection through prayers, through your gifts and talents of service here, and also, as you see on the screen, tithes and offerings. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, as you continue to uh, dwell both here and uh, in your homes, just God's blessings to you all as we continue to celebrate this Trinity Sunday on Memorial Day weekend. God's blessings. Let's our eyes as we worship our triune God. Oh Lord, we sing your praises. We sing your praises and we declare we believe in God the Father. We believe in Christ the Son. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, our God, three in one.
believe in you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 150, verse 6 tells us that everything that breathes, praise the Lord. Praise your Lord, name above all names. We think that we can dance in you, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May call our movement be a joy to you.
Yes, oh Holy Spirit, we just pray that you continue to move in our lives, effervescent, give a bounce to our step, a, a spring in our voice, uh, an extra dose of energy in you. Lord, as we do move in you, we come to you and we know that you are God who hears our prayers. And so Lord, we take this time to lift up all our prayers in the name of our triune God and for all people according to their needs. And so this Trinity Sunday, we praise and dance with you, O triune God. As ones born of the Spirit, may we go forth to share your movement in the world. May we share you whose nature is community, source of all sharing, in whom we love and meet and know our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we turn pages of our calendars to another month this week, we give thanks for all those who celebrate birthdays in this upcoming month of June. Bless their days of celebration with laughter and joy, and bless their years with your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we think about uh, new life and the gift of it, we give thanks for the gift of new life and babies being born to those we care for. We lift up friends of myself and Melina, Matt, and Nikki Harrington, as they are now proud parents of a little girl, Addison May. Thank you for the safe birth and give Matt, Nikki, and Addison care, help, and rest as they come together as a new family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And oh Lord, as we think about th this Memorial Day, we give thanks for the gracious care and uh, hope and love you share and that we can share with all men and women in our armed forces at home and abroad. We commend them to your care, asking that you defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations and give them courage to face the perils that beset them and help them to know above all else that nothing can separate them from your love. And Lord, we just ask that with that in mind that you continue to raise up uh, Christian military chaplains that would remind them of your love and your care, especially in hard times, that you are there and that they can ask questions and that you are present in their midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And with that in mind, O triune God, we lift up to you those who are asking questions and seeking you out. Give us opportunity to engage with those questioning. May we not dismiss their questions, but rather bless us with your patience, wisdom, and discernment. We also lift up those who feel alone or don't know your presence or all, at all or, or don't even know you or believe in you, as they feel like they do not have a dancing partner in this world. May the intimate love of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this Memorial Day weekend, hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone, O Lord. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in service of others and accept the gift of their sacrifice. Help us to shape and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares for a harvest of peace and justice. And finally, comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones in their military service. And let your healing be the hope in their hearts and in all our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we also pray for the safety of those who travel by land, sea, and air. We also pray for those who long to travel but cannot, and for all those who are separated from those they love, that soon they will be able to see them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray over our country, our leaders, and for all those in public service, uh, in our local communities, in our state, 
in our county and in the city, and for every city and nation, and for all who offer themselves with diligence and compassion to public service. May your wisdom and care guide them in all their decision making. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up to our dear sister, Jean Sullivan, who was admitted to the ER earlier this week. Uh, we just ask continued healing over her, but also give you thanks that she was discharged yesterday and is back home. We just pray for continued healing for Jean, uh, that you would restore her, uh, renew her, that you would remove all the cancer she is fighting, uh, and that you would just, in the power of the Holy Spirit, just make a new movement of healing, wholeness, and health in her life. And we also lift up to your husband, Joe, and their whole family as they support her. They would all uh, feel your overflowing love in their lives. And Lord, with that in mind, we pray over all the sick, the suffering, and isolated in our congregation, in our larger community, that we could reach out to them and let them know that they are loved. And we also lift up to you victims of violence. Lord, we, are, we come to you, and once again, in another week, there's a, another a shooting. Uh, and Lord, we just pray comfort over the families of those in San Jose and uh, and Lord, we just pray that your healing, that your compassion and care would surround them. Lord, we also pray for refugees and captives in other countries and for protection against all affliction, danger, and distress from you, uh, bringing that shelter, that hope, that mighty fortress into our lives and the lives of all those around the world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And at this time, lift up any of the prayers or praises on your hearts. I lift up Suzanne's sister, Nancy, to you, Lord, for your healing touch and your healing hand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Give you thanks and praise, Lord, that uh, somebody stepped forward to be the secretary on our council. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. <laughs> Lord, we lift up to you all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, all those that we lift up here in this place and in our homes, whether typed out or lifted up, or uh, even if we felt like we couldn't pray, you know, the Holy Spirit uh, raises up groans and utterances on our behalf. So, Lord, we just uh, place these all into your hands, trusting in your mercy, and knowing that you are a God of effervescent love, we are bold to pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we go forth from this place, like we just prayed with the effervescent love of our God, uh, going forth to do his will, the will of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May we go forth in celebra celebratory love, care, and joy for others and for each other, and especially towards you, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, may we move in your ways. And as we go forth to do this, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing out to our triune God.
Well, there surely is no God greater than our God, awesome in power. And our God will never leave us nor forsake us. And we give you all the praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.